One of my favorite movies when I was a boy was Frankenstein. I guess I just love being scared half to death. You know the story. A mad scientist figured out how to take pieces of different human bodies, knit them together, and then bring the new creature to life. All seemed good and exciting at first, but then things went haywire. The creation misbehaved and became a monster, even turning on and killing his creator. Part of the lesson of the story is that there are often unforeseen and unintended consequences. Another message is, just because we can doesn't mean we should. It can end up humorous too. Like, what do you get when you cross a parrot with a lion? Well, I don't know either, but when it speaks, you better listen. Or, what do you get when you cross a turkey and an octopus? You get enough drumsticks for everyone in the family at Thanksgiving. What do you get when you cross a potato with a sponge? I'm not sure what to call it, but it sure holds a lot of gravy. You know that old statement and how it goes, if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, and quacks like a duck, then it's probably a duck. Sounds right, makes sense, but is it always true? Through the marvel of modern science, we can now genetically alter or modify almost any living thing. This is usually called genetic engineering and involves the manipulation, either adding or subtracting genetic material, especially DNA, creating a mutation. When this is done, is it still a tomato or an ear of corn, or is it now a Franken tomato and Franken corn? Why would we want to do this anyway? What's the point? Well, the goals of genetically engineering food sound sensible, even praiseworthy. The stated aims of genetic modification include improving on the natural order of things, encouraging faster growth, increased nutrition profile by altering the amount of proteins, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals, and fats, better taste, increased resistance to disease, pests, herbicides, pesticides, and requiring less water. That all sounds like perfect world stuff to me. What could possibly go wrong with that? The big answer is we don't know. It's a young science. Is it safe? Will there be unforeseen, unwanted, and unintended consequences? Right now, the biggest answer is we really don't know. The truth is there are already some occurring. The contamination of crop genetics has caused allergies in some individuals, upset the normal ecosystem in some areas, been instrumental in developing new strains of superbugs, created herbicide-resistant weeds, and decreased nutrition quality in spite of maintaining appearance. The point is that it's early in the process and the outcome is at least unpredictable. Remember, originally asbestos was hailed as a cheap, effective insulation and lead made paint cover and protect better. Now we know that they have killed and sickened huge numbers of innocent people worldwide. Would it shock you to know that approximately 90% of the soybeans and corn and 80% of the papaya in the U.S. are already genetically modified? Time will tell if we're doing ourselves a health favor or creating franken fruits and vegetables that may turn on us. I do know this, that it's pretty hard to improve on what nature has provided for us. And I keep coming back to that nagging thought of just because we can doesn't mean we should. Just ask Dr. Frankenstein. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and share it. For weekly health videos like this one, head on over to youtube.com slash sunwarriortribe and subscribe.